we were just showing you a replay of a, an event that Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi had when she was addressing the Paycheck Fairness Act that she plans to enact in Congress. Speaker of the House says that it is vital for Congress to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act. The act is a part of an effort to address the gender pay gap in the United States. And Pelosi also says that employers must treat their workers fairly. Now, I want to bring someone else into the conversation right now. Joining us live is Brandon Arnold, Executive Vice President at the National Taxpayers Union. Brandon, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. So, Brandon, we're learning a lot of new information about President Biden's administration's legislative agenda, right? And it's including a lot of spending and tax increases we're hearing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what we just saw was a one trillion dollar COVID package that was supposed to get the economy back roaring again. Of course, that was quickly followed by a $2.25 trillion infrastructure package that really speaks to infrastructure, though it does contain massive tax increases that would slow our economic recovery. And then on top of that, we get another $1.5 trillion budget with double digit increases for virtually every department in the federal government that's going to further exacerbate our debt problems here. So we're seeing a ton of new spending. What we're not seeing is any kind of fiscal restraint, given the fact that we've amassed massive, massive debt and deficit over the past year in trying to combat the, the, the COVID pandemic. What are some of the biggest changes that we're seeing right now specifically? Well, if you look at the budget, what it laid out was an enormous increase for the Department of Education, a 40% boost to the Department of Education. Uh, it was a 16% increase across the board for uh, for uh, non-defense spending, even defense spending. Democratic Party who wanted to see some reductions in deficit in uh, defense spending. They're not getting that. Instead, what we're getting is massive increases in, in virtually every department in the federal budget. And you may think these are good, you may think these are bad, but at a time when our nation has amassed $28 trillion in debt, $5 trillion of which is associated with getting us out of the COVID pandemic, maybe it's time for a little austerity. Maybe it's time to actually look at opportunities to rein in spending, to prioritize very important things, and to say that other less important things don't deserve double digit budget increases, maybe even it's time to trim a little bit of that spending back. And this budget plan is titled the infrastructure plan, right? So for the average American, that could be a little bit confusing. I'm really glad that you're here to kind of explain to our viewers what is in this exact budget. Now, when it comes to the $2 trillion tax hike, what could this, what, excuse me, what could this do to jobs in America? Yeah, the $2 trillion uh, tax hike is very, very problematic. Of course, most of this is focused on corporations. So for a lot of people, they say, well, I'm not a corporation. This isn't going to impact me. The truth is about 70% of this $2 trillion corporate tax hike is going to be passed along to workers in the form of lower wages and in the form of fewer jobs. So if you look at the National Association of Manufacturers, they modeled this. They looked at the economic impact that it would have. They said it would reduce employment in this country by one million jobs, a massive impact on working class Americans. The Tax Foundation modeled it. They said every income group will see a reduction in after tax, whether you're poor, whether you're rich, whether you're somewhere in between, you'll see less take home pay as a result of this. So just taxing corporations, it may sound good on, on paper, but when you actually look at it in practice, it doesn't work. It raises taxes on low income, middle income, high income Americans. And in my opinion, it would violate that pledge that Biden made, of course, not to raise taxes on four, on people making less than $400,000 a year because those people would absolutely feel the impact of this tax increase. So what would be a solution to growing the economy? Well, I think the economy is doing pretty well. If you look at the last two jobs report, we're, we're creating hundreds of thousands of jobs. My three-part plan for getting this economy back to where it needs to be is vaccines, vaccines, and you guessed it, vaccines. Once we're able to deploy vaccines, and we've done a pretty good job over the past several months of getting vaccines into people's arms, we're reopening more and more businesses. We're seeing those businesses, particularly in the hospitality industry, which was hurt extraordinarily hard by the COVID pandemic. We're seeing those jobs come back. Hotels are hiring. 
restaurants are hiring, even sporting events are starting to reopen their doors and create jobs. We're on the right path here. We don't need to spend trillions of dollars. We might need to spend money around the margins to small businesses that have been hit particularly hard, but we don't need massive trillion dollar infrastructure packages. Let's address the high priorities that we have, the roads, the bridges that are crumbling, but let's not look at, the, at this wish list of progressive policies right now. Now is not the time when we need this or can afford this. And Brandon, is there a final thought that you would like to leave our viewers with? Yeah, I mean, if you look at this infrastructure package, I, I, I have to put infrastructure in air quotes because so much of it is not actually infrastructure by any reasonable definition of the word. There's $400 billion in this package for elderly health care through Medicaid program. There is more money in this package for electric vehicles than there is for roads, bridges, highways, and airports combined. This is an infrastructure. It's a wish list of programs that the Biden administration would like to see implemented that's using infrastructure as cover to get it passed. We should focus on real infrastructure, making sure the economy has the roads, bridges, internet, water systems, electric grid that we need and set aside these other lower priority items for another day when our nation is in better financial shape. Brandon, always a pleasure to have you here on News Now from Fox. Hopefully this can be an ongoing discussion as we really enjoyed your thought-provoking conversation and the points that you made. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. All right, switching gears now.